today we're talking about leaky gut syndrome om to the g amy per my usual i do the intro you start us off so say a few words if you would about leaky gut oh man leaky gut's such an interesting topic to chew on just because there's so many misconceptions about what it is and what it is not Mm -hmm. i think with leaky gut a really important aspect to understand is that like leaky gut or intestinal permeability as it's referred Mm -hmm. to in a lot of the scientific literature everyone has some level of permeability um Mm -hmm. i think again it's it's always interesting to come at it from that angle i think just to start like it's not necessarily always a bad thing um Mm -hmm. we have uh, at different points of the day you might be having more permeable a more leaky gut or permeable gut and that other points in the day that there's less leakiness um in terms of illness and causing issues and symptoms uh, a lot of the things that commonly get attributed to permeability uh are things like bloating gut symptoms um but a lot of the symptoms or a lot of the things that are actually a result of leaky gut don't necessarily always get contributed to it like inflammation joint pain headaches Mm -hmm. um cognitive issues uh depression anxiety those sorts of things um that aren't necessarily gut related tend to be more uh associated with leaky gut um a lot of metabolic issues tend to be a lot more associated with leaky gut than gut issues themselves Um, And it's not to say that people with gut issues don't have leaky gut because they very much can, but it's usually more uh, associated with the severity of the IBS or IBD than anything else. Um, But yeah, I I guess we should talk about like what exactly it is too. I just kind of jumped into like, oh, there's so many, there's so many potential like misconceptions around yeah. what is leaky gut and what isn't uh, yeah if you want to just kind of talk a little bit about like what it is in a little bit more detail the gut lining itself so that layer of one cell deep tissue that separates your microbes your microbiome and the inside of your gut from the rest of your freaking body that layer that single cell layer of tissue the gut lining can either be more porous or more leaky, like leaky like a sieve, or it could be relatively tight and taut and toned and not letting a lot of stuff through. Ideally, you want your gut and your body to choose what gets through. So it can kind of like, in a way, it could say, oh, bacterial toxin, no thank you. You go back over there. Vitamin B12, come on in. Protein, come on in. Carbohydrates, come on in. And it can traffic that and select and use receptors and traffic that to some extent. But with leaky gut, you have either big gaping holes in between the cells or entire cells could get obliterated. And if you're not rebuilding the gut lining and those cells at a fast enough pace, you're left with a poor quality lining. So now instead of having like, you know, just use another metaphor, instead of having a barrier that's something akin to leather, now you have something that's working to cheesecloth, separating you and your microbes. So it can be pretty detrimental because you lose that ability to decide what comes in and what does not. And it ends up meaning that ironically, a lot of your nutrients have a harder time getting into your body and you get more like malabsorption type patterns and all the bad stuff, the bacterial and the candida toxins end up getting through more readily than you would want. So it's, it's a big old cluster F. Um, there's definitely been cases where I don't think leaky gut has been at play uh, that mm-hmm. I've worked with. So not every severe IBS um, SIBO case, I think, has leaky gut going on. Um, yeah. But it's always interesting to me, like the people that do have pretty strong joint pain. That's something I see a yeah. lot in when there's leaky gut at, involved. I think a lot of histamine type reactions I yeah. see more so when there's leaky gut. Um, I think when there's kind of more systemic type symptoms, uh, uh, more systemic type symptom profile than, um, 
just kind of bloating uh, or reflux or kind of some of these other symptoms that get attributed to permeability and leaky gut. Yeah, I would say the same. I think that, you know, there definitely is research that um, a lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome have leaky gut. Yeah. And a lot of people with celiac disease and Crohn's and colitis. Um, so it's not to say that those folk don't have it, but what is more closely linked and the severity is more closely linked is metabolic syndrome yeah, and widespread systemic inflammatory type events. So like if you have abdominal adiposity, if you have hypertension, diabetes, you know, if you have something like that, or if you have a lot of joint pain or a lot of brain fog, why we have the current culture around leaky gut that we do, I blame functional medicine to some extent because for a while, I don't know if it's as prominent anymore. I kind of checked out, honestly, from my own profession, so I don't know. But for the longest time, when I was first learning functional medicine and going to seminars, you know, like 2010, I remember explicitly people at the IFM or people at Apex saying that leaky gut was a root cause. Yeah. And all of us in the audience were like, totally. Right, yeah, like right. root cause. Root cause medicine is great. And we would all like gay raw shish at the IFM conventions or whatever it was. And that led me down the rabbit hole personally of quote unquote healing my leaky gut mm -hmm. with glutamine and repairvite and whatever for two freaking years before yeah. I actually got to the root cause. Oh. It's like, it's like you have to trace it back a little bit further. Like, okay, leaky gut is kind of a root cause it's like a it's it's like the biggest of the roots right when yeah. the tree first kind of splits like all right that's the first root but then you have to dive deeper and ask why did you get leaky gut right right it, it doesn't happen to everybody all the time it's not like your body just randomly on a wednesday decided you know this would be real fun if my gut was a train wreck what you're the what you're saying is that the environment matters and your stress levels uh, what you're putting, your diet, your lifestyle, other lifestyle factors are going to play mm -hmm. a huge role in whether your uh, your gut's more permeable. Um, and, and I think that it's really important because I know you were mentioning supplements, which I think can mm -hmm. be really helpful. Um, it's not they that they're, they're not helpful at with um, gut permeability. But I also think that Again, I think in the past there was like a level of reliance, like in your particular case, like, oh, I'm taking Repairvite or I'm taking um, glutamine. I'm taking all these things like they're just going to like heal my gut. But you have to pull on all the levers that could be driving um, gut permeability and gut have to yeah. really work on lifestyle factors, stress. Um, if you're yep. on NSAIDs, stop taking NSAIDs daily oh, yeah. for pain. Um, yeah. So again, there's there's a lot of factors that affect permeability, uh, and maybe Absolutely. again we can kind of dive in a little bit deeper to. I know we mentioned stress, diet, um, NSAIDs. What else yeah. can we can we dive into? Antibiotics. Oh is yeah, a pretty for big sure. Biggie. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it's so like antibiotics and killing your good bacteria. Yeah. Alters the microbial environment, and then the microbes are going to alter the gut lining. Yeah. Um, hormones, too. If your hormones are all squirrely, that could yeah. cause leaky gut because you need thyroid hormone to heal your gut. And if you're a woman, you do need some amount of estrogen and progesterone to heal your leaky gut. And if you're a dude, you sure as heck need testosterone to heal your gut. They're probably not going to be the thing that initially drives the leaky gut, but they're going to keep you stuck. I, I think circadian rhythms can be interesting and just timing mm. of meals. Uh, yeah. as well. I know we've talked about that a little bit. Um, it allows your gut to prepare for food coming in and allows for the gut to to put up some defenses to let things through, but also keep things out. I also think one other factor um, that I've seen, it's not super common in my clients, but like alcohol is something uh, to mm. bring up too. What others? There's honestly, there's probably a slew of medications that cause leaky gut. Right. But the biggies right. that come to mind are definitely antibiotics, NSAIDs, so you know, mm -hmm. like ibuprofen, et cetera, yeah. um, and corticosteroids. And sometimes, ironically, autoimmune folk wind up taking prednisone 
And it can be kind of a sticky place to be where like a lot of environmental chemicals and toxins probably have the ability to induce leaky gut to Mm -hmm. some extent. I feel like we're so bombarded with stress uh, that like knowing that it sometimes takes a lot of rest to potentially build back that gut barrier and making sure Mm -hmm. you're carving out time for deep rest um, to help that process. If you are feeling overwhelmed, I think it's a really important factor. So let's see. So we talked about what leaky gut is, things that it's associated with, uh, a bit about what causes leaky gut. Now let's get into what the heck do you do about it? The, yeah. the holy grail, right? Oh, yeah. Of like, how do you treat leaky gut? Yeah, no, that's such a great question. And I I think that when it comes to interventions, I feel like there's so many supplements that are promoted as like leaky gut, le- leaky gut support, leaky gut repair, um, which some of them could be incredibly helpful. So I'm, I'm not discounting mm-hmm. that. But I think, like I said earlier, you want to have all these lifestyle factors in place or else the supplements aren't really going to make a difference. Um, So I think in terms of interventions, things like um, getting enough sleep is really key. Mm -hmm. Um, Stress management in general, making sure you're taking time for yourself. Um, yeah, the vagus nerve, which I we haven't mentioned yet, so I'll, I'm happy to to do it well, for not this, this episode. For this episode, yes, we haven't mentioned it this episode. Um, so like vagal tone, uh, that sort of thing. I know we didn't talk about it. Well, we well you had mentioned it with your concussion potentially being a leaky gut mm-hmm. factor, but that can also be a, a root cause. Um, yeah. But I think, again, paying attention to your nervous system, your stress response in general is really key. Um, The dietary side of things, like we have been mentioning too and and hinting at, getting diversity in the diet as much as possible. Obviously, um, removing things that might might be inherently inflammatory for you, like what you were saying, maybe the heavy hitters like gluten and dairy experimentation, but... Yeah. Trying to keep it broad um, and maybe removing only things that you're reacting to um, yeah. and keeping it broad with with plant and with with plant fibers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like try to diversify your plants. The meat probably doesn't matter quite as much. You know, yeah. if you I mean, a, a bit, you know, try to get some diversity in the way of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, um, herbs and spices is a really nice way. Yeah. And teas is a really nice way too, that if you can load up, you know, soups and, and dishes with a lot of herbs, then that's a really nice way to get diversity in. I think, again, things like probiotics can be helpful. Oh, I did want to mention circadian rhythm stuff. So like trying to eat at consistent meal times. I know we've mentioned that. Yeah. We mentioned that in yep. the stomach acid episode, I believe. I think um, supplement wise, you know, there's there's a million different right. leaky gut healer uppers. And I mentioned right. one, Repairvite. Um, plain old glutamine is helpful. But like you said, you need a pretty high dose. Like I think I've seen studies go up to like 30 grams yeah. a day, which is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Um for zinc, I really like zinc carnosine yeah. specifically. Mm-hmm. I use quite a lot of that. And it's very well tolerated even by the most squirrely of autoimmune people, the most squirrely of histamine intolerant or mast cell people uh, who I work quite a lot with. Like when is testing relevant and, and what mm-hmm. sort of testing do you look at um, when it comes mm-hmm. to leaky gut? Yeah. So I will confess my bias, at least in this time frame right now, 2021, is I do tend to be mindful of people's budgets and not yeah. spend all their money on all the things. I don't necessarily test for leaky gut on everybody, although I've thought about it before. Maybe I should because it's not terribly expensive. Um, there's a couple of main ways that you could test for leaky gut. The one that I tend to still use the most of, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to do it. And it takes time, but it is the most well-researched and well-supported, and it's been used for a long time, is the lactulose mannitol ratio yeah. test. So you drink a sugar solution, and then you collect your pee in a jug for six hours. And then they're looking to see how much of these two sugars got absorbed to your gut. 
put into your blood and then filtered in the kidneys and then made into urine. So that it's pretty non-invasive. My only hesitancy is that if somebody, you know, with like a raging case of SIBO, for example, might not do too, too well with the ingestion of the lactulose and the mannitol. Yeah. Because mannitol is a FODMAP. Um, if somebody's got a raging case of SIBO or is definitely FODMAP intolerant, then I might not do that one. But otherwise, I tend to like that one because it's cheap. It's like, you know, 50 or 100 bucks, maybe, depending on insurance. And it's easy enough to do. It's pretty non-invasive. And that is what the bulk of the research seems to use, or it has historically for the last, like, 20 years. Hey, guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.